Hello and thank you for watching the Dearman Tool videos. Many times I'm asked how all of this CNC comes about. Anybody I talk to, I use the words, it's a process, so we thought maybe we ought to outline that process a little. This is a basic process. Certainly there are different ways and different methods to get from needing a part to having that part in your hand, but these are the basics. The first step is typically when somebody finds that they need a piece of art or a part of some kind, either to market or for their own use. At that point, the next thing that they need is a way to get there. All of the CNC process starts typically with a CAD program or a modeling program. This is where you develop your design and create what we call the CAD file or the model file. Sometimes the CAD and the CAM are done in the same program. Here we're going to demonstrate it as being done in two different programs. So we're going to take a look at each one of these things just a little bit and show you an example of how each one of them are used just to a light degree. It's not a lesson in CAD CAM, but again, it's to show the steps that it takes to produce a part using a CNC machine. There's a near limitless number of CAD programs. This is the Rhino modeling program or CAD program, whichever you prefer to call it. This little piece was done to demonstrate the transition feature in Rhino and then the hole was put in there using a Boolean difference. You can literally draw whatever comes to your mind. It's just a matter of learning to use the software. Some programs work better than others for mechanical parts and for arts. This is a Dell Cam product that is made just for jewelers and it's the finest program you can find to draw jewelry in. We don't sell this product but if you want it give us a call and we'll tell you who to buy it from. These programs all have their positive and negative aspects for mechanical parts, I like Rhino, unless I'm using CAD wax with it. For art parts, I really enjoy the, uh, the Dell Cam products. Looking at Rhino again, it's easy to tell why a lot of CNC folks use this product to draw mechanical parts in. This single line in just a few clicks using the rail revolve feature in Rhino can be turned into this. If you had to draw each one of these segments individually it would take a long time and it wouldn't come out as smooth as what you'll get here. So you you can see why some of the features in Rhino lend itself to mechanical parts. Rhino works well for jewelry, don't get me wrong, it's just a little bit more of a challenge to get jewelry out of it uh, without something like CAD wax than it is mechanical parts. Again, we're just showing you some of the things that can be done in CAD and, and modeling programs. These files that we've been showing are three and four axis files. These are all models that even some of the lower end CAD and modeling programs can do. It may not be as easy or as fast to get it out of the lower end programs, but most of them are capable of producing files that will work with your CAM program. 
it's always good to consider how much flexibility you want in a CAD or modeling program. Here we drew this piece thinking that this was exactly what we were going to want with the Pegasus laid up on top following the curvature of this oval. We started this like all of our models in this program from a set of vector files. From this set of vectors we can create any 3D look that we would like to have. You may not always want to go exactly where you start, so flexibility is really important. In reality, this is what we wanted. So in just a couple of clicks, we went from what you've seen in the beginning to this. Okay, onward to the CAM program. Once we have the file that we want in our CAD program, we go to what we call the CAM program. This is where you establish the toolpath and turn the toolpath into code. There are about as many CAM programs as there are CAD programs. Here we've opened our file in Desk Proto, one of the moderately priced but best CAM programs there is on the market. Using Desk Proto, we'll make decisions about how we'd like to cut our model, what tool we'd like to use, We'll give the file a name as we go through here. We'll pick a cutting strategy. We'll use parallel and we'll run it along the x-axis as normal. We won't show everything here, but in Desk Proto, with the click of a few buttons, we establish our toolpath. We can examine the toolpath once we're happy with it with just a few more clicks we're ready to generate a code program that we will eventually now feed to our controller program. At this point we have saved the G-code file from Test Proto and put it into our G-code folder. Now we're going to make ready the controller program to accept the file and get ready to set up the mill and make our part. You can see more about how to do this over at the Super Support video site. We load the code file. It shows up down in the lower right hand corner. And from here we can tilt the file. We can zoom in on the file and do whatever we want to do. It's always a good thing to check this over make sure that it's right. Now you've been through CAD, CAM, and the controller program. All you need to do now is run the part. Here is our finished part. You've seen this part go through CAD, CAM, and the controller program. You can see that we got all of our detail that we had in our original vector drawing way back there in the CAD program. You've seen this part before if you've been over to our Super Support video site. This isn't hard. Anybody can do it. Here's the ring that you've seen in the CAD program. No matter whether it's three axis or four axis, the same set of steps works. We hope you've enjoyed the video and we hope it's been informative for you. Have a great day. Bye.